The assault is overwhelming, but we must hold out until reinforcements arrive, or die in the attempt. To each of us falls a task, and all the Emperor requires of us guardsmen is that we stand the line and we die fighting. It is what we do best. We die standing. Show them what we think of scum! Maintain fire and cut a swath through their ranks! Your Emperor asks but one task of you! Hold the line! This is PVA Block. I'm going to show you how to make the Field Command building for the Imperial Guard from the Dawn of War series of video games. Start off with some EVA foam, cut off the uh, tooth toggles, and then I sketched out the plan here. Now I base these measurements off the actual video game files. Uh, annoyingly, they are not many even sides here, but I just worked out the ratio with which everything is built, and I will share the images I used to make this layout in the comments below and on my Instagram. Cutting it into thirds so the piece will be modular. So the basic material is some recycled IKEA table. This is a really cheap table, I looked it up. Yeah, might need the legs, maybe for a little project, probably not. The underside is good and textured, so just trace it out here with a permanent marker, leaving a little bit of fat on the edges that aren't going to be directly connecting to the other sides. And don't forget to check the scale is looking okay with your pocket marine. That's good. Okay, so you want to double that EVA foam, so trace over some more foam, because you're going to want to have a floor and a roof. I'm using a hairdryer to heat up some EVA foam, and then I'm going to push this uh, storage container into it, because it's got a neat pattern on the bottom. I think this is going to make some evocative tiles for the interior of the field command. Trimming off the edge pieces of the EVA foam here, and these will become the walls. Glue them in place. I'm going to make a firing step here using some offcuts. And now I'm going to be making the vertical supports of the Imperial Guard bunker structure. There's the measurements there, and you're going to need at least 18 of these. 18 times 2, so you want two of them together to make one strut. Toothpicks hold it together, let them dry. Getting the idea here. Two layers is the perfect height for cover. Good size for large models and small. Now I'm going to need to cut out the height and width of the wall there just to make the bunker uh, supports fit in there. You can see I've cut out a section. Tidy. And now the roof struts. The gap is three layers high. Now for the command tower on the top here. I'm going to make it modular as well, and it's just four vertical struts and some offcuts. PVA glue and toothpicks to hold everything together. I also cut out a second doorway, tapering at the top with some triangular pieces. Cut out some little notches here so the top tower can sit snug just like the game model. Very cute. And made a gap here so we can make an angled access hatch for the end piece. I'm adding a firing step on the end piece as well. And that's going to be covering up the offcuts I used for some of the base layer. Lots of offcuts. But the end results look good. Now at the windows where the models will be shooting out of, I also cut the uh, cover at an angle like actual pillboxes. I considered a lot of materials for the satellite dish on the top of the tower here, but decided on the remains of an egg timer and a cheap children's uh, plastic bowl. I cut out a hole slightly smaller than the larger bowl, just so it would sit snug. The middle section is just more imprinted base layer and some vertical struts supporting the walls. Oh yeah. I also decided that I wanted to have some nice green LED lighting in that top tower. I'm just using some green plastic from the post office. I got these cheap wire lights from Cheapest Chips. It's like a 
dollar store equivalent, I suppose. Got yourself some green light. Now just glue this into the roof of the tower itself, making sure you can access both the power switch and the battery pack in case you go to replace it. It does not need to be tidy because you're not going to be able to see it. Done. Don't uh, discard the perfectly functional, chasing the perfect. Look at that. I'm not complaining. Hopefully you're not complaining. Anyone can do this. I'm not kidding. You can see I hot glued on some offcuts from the basing material onto the roof just to add some strength. And I cut the C-shaped piece into thirds to make it easier to access the model inside. I also added some foam core on the roof here to be the green metal. And you can see here how I built the angular piece. Now I make mistakes. I didn't quite measure correctly here, so I just added some extra foam to fill in that space. Now gap filler, this is going to smooth everything out and give me the concrete plascrete effect I want. Once it's dry, you can sand it smooth. Just sandpaper stapled to a piece of wood and a nail file. Mm. It's coming together. Nerf darts of the Mega Variety. These are going to be these tubes, containment tanks, fuel tanks or whatever they are on the back here behind the satellite dish. I've also got this toy truck I found on the beach. And some more of that foam core. Combined, they're going to be the vents. And just some more foam core for these little detailed parts which are on the model. Got some grey paint, some PVA glue and some water. And just paint everything. The PVA will protect it, so as long as you get one layer, you can follow it up with spray paint if you want to. And I also glued some zip ties here into the satellite dish. Primed it with some actual primer. Did that with all the green parts. And then followed that up with a darker green. The darker green was a little bit glossy, so I hit that with a matte varnish afterwards. I could have done this step before painting, but hindsight's 2020. This was still really fun. This is battle damage. Big bullets make big holes. Neat. And then just paint. Now this is my hint as to why sometimes my videos take a while. My build space is exposed to the weather. Anyway, this model needs some skulls. To properly represent the game model. Then super glue, then skull. Done. Oh yeah, add some pipes into the tubes here. I only made a gun rack out of a bulldozer blade for a tank and some spare las guns. And then you're going to just dry brush all the grey areas with white paint. Straightforward, but it's effective. Now for dry brushing the green, you want to start with some yellow, add a small amount of green, mix it together, and just dry brush all the green areas. Simple, simple process. I'm going to use the gold paint that I had handy, and hit all the skulls, and some key areas that I wanted to. And then I did a similar thing with the silver picking out some interesting areas. Getting that white paint again and a piece of sponge and I'm just going to go over all the tile areas. I'm using a sponge because it gives a nice even finish. Fast. You could call the paint job done here if you wanted to but I'm going to keep going just to add that extra 5%. If you don't have any of the computer panels from the inside of the vehicles or mechanics kits lying spare, you can just use any textured plastic. I'm using this food container here. I'm checking the spacing using a guardsman. And I'm just gluing a little piece on here and some beads. Paint them up, you get yourself a computer panel. I've also got some cable protectors here to add some more detail. A lot of Warhammer artwork and um, models, it's a cable management nightmare. That's a little reference. 
If you've got shaky hands like me, or you're not terribly confident in freehanding, like me, here's a cheat. Print it out on your work printer, paint the back, cut it out, and use PVA glue. You got yourself some sigils. Now I'm gluing this over some battle damage. So what I'm going to do is once this is dry, I'm going to wet the areas where the battle damage are and just poke holes through. Just gently work the hole open until the crater is revealed. You can paint again if needed. It's a super simple process and I think the results are pretty neat looking. For how basic this is, it should not look nearly as good as this, but it does. Make use of it. Tried and true. PVA glue and sterilized sand. I'm going to add some more detail here, some detritus, some stones, some rubble using blended offcuts. Glue them in place and then paint them using some just mixed browns with some PVA glue added to just help protect it. And when that's dry, just dry brush it with white. Now I'm coming back in here with like a really dark brown, some raw umber. And this is going to be battle damage on the metal areas. Those same areas are hit with the raw umber, come in with the silver. And there you go. Some chipping damage. Now I want the remaining brown paint that I use for the basing. I'm just going to add water until it's the same consistency as water as a really weak wash and just apply that to everything. If you get too much, use a sponge to clear off the excess and then add some bullet casings. I've got a separate video to show you how to make these. It is, I think it's three minutes long. It's really simple, but you can see it looks neat. I am a fan of making your own washes, but Seraphim Sepia, Seraphim Sepia, it's just a good product. I'm just taking those cheap printouts from work, hitting them with it. Boom, you've got some really thematic looking posters. I'm also using a map from a tourist guide, hitting it with the Seraphim Sepia. Boom, 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 baby. So good, so easy. Don't be afraid to tear these up when you've glued them on or leave them in crumpled heaps on the ground. You know, a battlefield may lead to some uh, lax tidiness. Storytelling. And you can see the PVA glue there, it dries clear, holds everything together. Nice. Now I'm using a dark wash here. I did make this myself using some black ink and I'm just adding extra to the skulls and some of the bullet holes, just some grime, you know, um, just smoke. It's going to be a bit messy. I'm using a bit of black paint here on a sponge and just adding it onto the posters and some of the craters as some scorching. And I'm using my own special blend blood mix here. I've got another video to show you how to make your own as well. And I'm just kind of going nuts. I think somebody got hit with a bolt round here. And another one. And someone's not had a good day. But really, dying is what the guard does best. You can see that the blood recipe I used does actually dry and look like wet blood. And I've just applied some actual minis in here, some little ammo boxes. It looks the piece. I'm honestly pretty pleased with these results. Obviously, this is not perfectly to scale with the in-game model. I did take some creative liberties to try and make this practical from a gameplay standpoint. If you want to play Kill Team in here, or even like a full-on apocalypse grade 40k game, you want to actually be able to fit models in here. And hey, what if some big Death Guard models actually managed to make their way inside? You want them to fit as well. The game models wouldn't have allowed you to have really more than perhaps 10 guardsmen inside. Here, you could probably fit a small army. So you could really have this as a centerpiece of your games. Lots of fun. Now this comes in pieces, so you could easily rearrange this to be something other than a field command, maybe like a, an actual military installation, or just some smaller pieces for smaller Serranos. Pretty neat. I've added posters on all the sides, bullet holes. I wanted this to tell a story while still being an affectionate homage to the game Dawn of War.
Winter Assault, and Dark Crusade, and Soul Storm for the mods. Pretty cool. I can't wait until the lockdown lifts so I can actually play some games with this. Now, if you've got any questions, please hit me up. Do the whole like and subscribe thing. Um, I am going to be sharing the measurements. I am not an engineer, but I will do what I can to help you make your own version. But you can see those little details just add a lot to the storytelling. You can sort of imagine somebody missing an arm trying to make their way inside. All the bullet holes here. It's just a drill. This is just foam. This is really cheap stuff. Pasta. Literal pasta. There's really nothing holding you back from the table of your dreams. Once again, thanks for watching. I uh, do hope to keep making videos. I apologize for the length of time this one took to uh, make. I mean, it was a pretty big project and um, these are interesting times we live in and this isn't my job. I've got to fit this around my other commitments. But ideally, I would like to actually make every Imperial Guard building in a cheap, easy to replicate manner. So you could all make the table you wanted in the early 2000s. <laughs> Thanks for checking it out. I hope to see you again in my future projects. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, the whole uh, shtick. And just take care of yourselves. I hope to see you again.